The Stellar Cult by Paul Tice, the Stellar Cult originated in Egypt. Much of it was to merge later with Christianity. The god Horus the major deity of the Stellar Cult was Horus, who signified the horizon. The Egyptian god Horus was known as the great chief of the axe or the great god of the axe. He was symbolized by an axe or double axe, sometimes symbolized by a hammer. Horus, the Egyptian god, was also referred to as the god of the double horizon. The first temple of the axe was built at Edfu, where Horus was also named the lord of the forged city. The temple of Edfu was oriented north from a point within the Little Bear constellation. An inscription found there says, I cast my face towards the course of the rising constellations. I let my glance enter the constellation of the Great Bear. I established the four corners of my temple. This was something presumably said by Horus about the nature or the placement of this important temple at Edfu. This temple, meant to worship Horus, god of the axe, was nothing new in relation to other parts of the world. This god of the axe, as part of the worldwide stellar cult, has been found in other areas of the world such as Tepoxtacantle, god of the axe of the Mexicans. Also there was Erechia, god of the axe from Tinogasta. The Toltec god of the axe was also found to be from the area of Tepozteco. Evidence seems to indicate that the first exodus of the stellar cult people to arrive in America from Egypt via Asia did end up in Mexico. Talon, another common name in Mexico and even the name of a city, is also another name for Horus. We also find the god of the axe named Raman. He is of the Chaldeans. Then there is the god of the axe found with the Susians. The list goes on and on from around the world in finding the common god of the axe who originated in the stellar cult. One of the earliest stellar cults for Horus was commonly called the cult of Aten, or disc worship. This disc worship, sometimes portrayed as a winged disc, was mistakenly interpreted as the sun, according to Albert Churchward, by many Egyptologists. In fact, this disc was originally a symbol for Aten, which in turn was a very early name of Horus as god of the dual horizons. The word Aten is in fact derived from an ancient name for the child Horus. Horus is the earliest form of Aten and is symbolically portrayed as the winged disc. This winged disc has also traveled the world and in one example it is found above the door of a temple at Ocosingo which is near Palenque in Mexico. It is also known as the Thunderbird by North American Indian tribes. It also has been found as far away as Scotland at a place called Vitrified Fort in Ainworth. The Assyrians and Chaldeans displayed winged discs as showing that the stellar cult was carried into these countries as well. The stellar cult was the earliest of the three cults solar, lunar and stellar. It lasted a very long time in Egypt, so it is much harder to trace the origins of this particular cult than the other two. What makes it difficult to trace is that when the lunar and solar cults followed, if they could not kill all the old stellar cult people, as they did in Europe, they grafted some of their new doctrines onto the stellar cults, so the local religion became a hodgepodge of various Egyptian beliefs. There is no doubt that scientific research proves this today. 26 During the advent of the lunar cult, there were various episodes of exodus, people leaving the Egyptian area who were stellar cult people. When they left the motherland they took with them the doctrines that had evolved up to the time of the exodus, and many were cut off from the progress that was constantly taking place in Egypt. They moved on and remained in their primary stellar religious phase. This is why researchers find, in that general area of the Middle East, varying concepts and examples of the stellar cults. Tracing them back to their earliest times has been the researchers' true challenge. Horus represents the earliest known part of the stellar cult that we have been able to determine. Out of the many countries that the stellar cults moved into, let us use Japan as one example. Of all the Shinto gods of the heavens the highest one is said to dwell in the star Taiyal of the constellation Draco, also known as the constellation of Horus Sebek, the crocodile dragon. The Chinese also recognized a stellar enclosure or circle of stars in the northern heavens in the region of Draco and Ursa Minor. They named this circle of stars after the other lower deities who surround the sovereign or most high. The Egyptians had this very same setup. The circle of the seven lords of eternity was first, with the throne of the highest erected in the center. According to the mystery of the seven stars in the book of Revelation 1 16, 20, the seven as servants are depicted around the throne of God. There may be a strong connection here as well. Jesus is accompanied by the seven great angels or spirits, who are the stars, whose place is before the throne of God. Being of Egyptian origin, these were originally the seven servants or the sashu of Horus. The god Set, the stellar cult mainly followed Horus, but within it were also the followers of Set or Seth. Set was the firstborn child of the great mother Apt and between Set and the crocodile dragon Horus, the two of them formed the primary diet that is sometimes called Set Typhon, or an Egyptian Set Tept. According to an account of the book of Genesis, Set was the firstborn child of Eve. He was the primary ruler and symbolized as the male hippopotamus. As the primary power he was the first to sit at the pole of heaven. This is why he was the reputed author of astronomy. Horus and Set getting back to the two main stellar cults of Horus and Set, these two were constantly at odds with each other throughout the mythological history of Egypt, therefore you cannot have one without the other. The two did in fact start at approximately the same time. 
followers of Horus and those of Set fought many battles which were actually fights in the domain of fact, and therefore not mythical. Although the two cults were started at approximately the same time, the cult of Set started a bit earlier than the cult of Horus. Religion itself did not evolve until the Horus cult evolved. It was the followers of Horus who could express themselves well and they were able to keep the records of the past. Besides the hawk, the head of the eagle is one of the symbols of Horus. The same symbolism is found in Christianity where Saint John is imaged symbolically by the eagle. The stellar cults were the first groups to keep track of time in any sophisticated sort of way. Before the stellar cult there was no record of time except night and day, and the wet season and dry season. With the advent of the stellar cult they began working on astronomical and mathematical knowledge and they worked it out to a very high state. The high state which they had attained is proved by the Great Pyramid of Giza, something never equal to this day. The main subject of the stellar cult was the history of Horus. His title was that. 27 of Ripa. It identified him as the child born to be king. Horus had as his mother one who had begotten him, but yet she was a virgin. Therefore Horus was referred to as the bastard. In the legend of Jesus, to the Jews he was also called the manger or bastard. Horus the child on various papyri is pictured on his mother's lap and is representative of the resurrection and renewal of life for another year. Horus and the pap Horus came to Egypt as a savior of the people. He saved them from the dreaded drop. He came invested with the power of the southern lakes. This power was meant to drown the dragon in the inundation, as this dragon was the opposite or antagonist of Horus. Horus is a savior because he is the bringer of much needed water. He also treads the serpent of darkness underfoot and is therefore referred to as the renewer of light the same as Jesus. This reptile that opposed Horus was represented in the constellation of Hydra and the reptile's name was Apap. It is the fearsome monster that on the various Egyptian legends drank up all the water. In the solar cult, Apap is the antagonist of Ra and is referred to as the blind, devouring darkness, but as the adversary of Horus, Apap or Hydra is the dragon of Draught. Draught in the land of Egypt was their major curse and the evil dragon was its deadly image. So this was a physical evil, not a moral one. Horus was interpreted as being born of the great southern fish and was represented also as the fish man who came to Egypt with water. This water was portrayed as a river in the heavens. It traveled north from the south up to the foot of Orion. In the earlier stellar cult Horus as Orion was the hunter of the power of darkness with his dog Sion and Prokin. The power of darkness was represented by Apap the dragon. The particular time of year when this victory was said to have taken place occurred as Orion rose in the scorpion constellation. This took place in the southern heavens, and when Orion rose up he bruised the serpent's head or crushed the dragon underfoot and this is when Apap is put into bonds. He is cut up piecemeal and submerged in the green lake of heaven. This was an important time to the Egyptians. It also represented the victory of Horus over Set. However, the stellar cult at this time of year celebrated the victory of Horus over Apap as opposed to Set. This was the beginning of a new year for the Egyptians. The fish and the virgin the virgin mother of Horus was known as Neith and she was represented in the stellar cult by a white vulture. Once again Horus was known to be her offspring. His birth also represented the incorporation of a spirit of light that had entered into human beings. In Christian doctrines this same vulture is symbolized as a pelican who had pierced her own thigh to give her blood to her young for nourishment. Blood is considered by many to have the spirit of life within it. This pelican represents the earliest soul considered to be human, being born of the mother blood. The soul that was made flesh was the child Horus. The origin of a savior coming as a little child is traced to the child Horus. He brought new life to Egypt every year. Horus, before being known as human, was symbolized as Ichthus, the fish. Later the image of Horus represented the young god in solar form as the cause of creation. In his more primitive version this fish's Horus symbolized the soul of life, or food, ascending up from the water of vegetation. It was like a spring of water welling up from the depths beneath the earth to furnish food and other edible plants within the reeds and other swampy areas of the Egyptian river valleys. It was within this area of the reeds, according to the Egyptian legends, that light first broke out of darkness in the beginning during the domain of Set. This is where the twin children of darkness and light were born. Those twin children were Set, of darkness, and Horus, of light. This very same legend can be found the world over, in Japan, North America, and various other cultures around the world. You can go to practically any of them and find the same. 28 Story Wherever you find this story it can definitely be traced to the original Horus of the stellar cult. In Christian Gnostic doctrines you find stories of Ichthus the fish. Horus was the earliest fish man known in mythology. He referred to himself as the fish in the form of a man. The Australian Aborigines also have an interesting story about a gigantic frog who drinks up all the waters in the world. This frog, of course, represents a pat the monster who swallows the waters at sundown. The Andaman Islanders also have a story about a conflict between the bird of light and the devil of darkness. This devil of darkness also drinks up the waters and is represented by a very large toad. The Iroquois Indians of North America have the same myth as well, showing a huge devouring monster as a giant frog. 
This same story is found in different aboriginal tribes in the Lake Tyres area. In Mexico this large water drinking creature is represented by a snake. The true savior? It is only Horus throughout the world, or his representing deity throughout each culture, that is able to save the world from this lack of water. This stellar cult doctrine had been carried out of Egypt. That is the root of this story. Set and the evil serpent of Pap are synonymous. In some Egyptian reliefs Horus is depicted as an elephant. He is standing with great weight upon the head of the evil serpent of Pap with his foot crushing down on its head and preventing it from drinking all the water of the world. At the same time he is pouring water, symbolizing rain, out of a large jug of water to fertilize the earth. Another Egyptian relief shows the great Apap, after having swallowed the water and the light of the world, and Horus shown once again as an elephant god fighting him to make him disgorge the water and the light. In yet another culture this story is found in India where the Naga is a very powerful and great god seen as a cobra. This is representative of the deity Horus. In India, Asia, and even in Central America, we do find elephant depictions in various important pictographs that have great religious significance. This elephant was carried to these cultures as a symbol of Horus. Symbols in the sky When we look to the sky we find clear symbols of not only the bringing of water after it has been drunk up by the evil demon, but of other legends as well. We find that the river flowing at its highest source in the sky was depicted by the Milky Way. The mother goddess gives forth the milk that is within this river which gives life to Horus. Horus is shown feeding at the breast of his mother in many Egyptian reliefs on temples. It seems Horus in turn is able to bring this life-giving liquid to the earth in time of need. The stars were extremely important to the Egyptians. What could be the earliest form of astrology is found within the stellar cult of Egypt. They divided the heavens into two different divine circles, the north and south circles of heaven. Each of these divine circles was divided into twelve houses with separate and distinct markings for each one represented by different animals. These animals symbolized the twelve great spirits of Egypt. Horus was known as the lord of the spirits in the heaven of eternity. The solar cult, which came later, was the one that originated the zodiac as we know it today, but this earlier stellar arrangement was not only the predecessor, but seems to be the entire basis for the zodiacal system of the solar cult. In fact the solar cult did later use the same original twelve characters that were used by the stellar cult. The names of the original characters used in the solar cult came from the stellar cult. Those twelve were one. Set four. Hopi seven. Amsta ten. Adam two. Horus 5. Ap you at 8. Anup 11. Sal 3. Shu 6. Caps enough 9. Ta 12. Hu. 29 The four brothers of Horus composed four out of this divine circle of 12. This original 12 was for the southern hemisphere. As stated earlier, they had divided the heavens into two regions, north and south, each with its own divine circle. The south came first and later transferred the same system to the northern heavens. The very uppermost part of the northern heavens was symbolized by a mountain summit or a pyramid, or sometimes as a mound of earth, a papyrus plant or a lotus in the water of immensity. Throughout the world to recap, we find Horus in virtually every culture around the world. Horus was, and is, the entire basis for the stellar cult. He is, however, absent in the Mayan and Incan cultures because they were solar cult people for the most part. The stellar cults in the New World were found in the other ancient Mexican cultures such as the Toltecs and the Zapotecs. The Zapotecs knew Horus as Pelmi. This name meant the great morning star, or the lord of the dawn. This clearly was the same as the Egyptian Horus. They knew Set, the god of darkness and the underworld, as Tepilotlik. All the gods of the Zapotecs were typical of the old stellar cult. The first three born of their mother goddess Tanert represented in all of their characteristic Set, Horus and Shu. Out of the three cults, stellar, lunar and solar, the stellar cult forms the basis of many of the two later forms of worship. Even so, the rankings of importance are all similar, since each has provided what we now know today as being important parts of our entire religious systems throughout the world. We cannot know our religions of the world today without knowing of each of these three separate cults. They all provide separate and important parts of what we know today. Although they function separately during each time that they were exhibiting their power over the world, they work collectively today and function more as a unit, although that was never originally intended.